Hi everyone. Welcome back to Rose Modeling with Art of Lisa. I hope you've all been well out there. So this is a channel that's dedicated to the wonderful folk art of Rose Modeling, a Norwegian folk art that goes back, oh, 300 plus years. So today I thought that um, some of the comments I had gotten back from my last video was maybe a little more of a close-up of some detail work. So I thought that's what we would do today. So let me take you down to the table. Here we go. Ooh shaking around a little bit all right i'm going to try to make sure and get a close-up view here first of all i have a palette paper just simple palette paper ready to go i wanted to sh first show what i do with my paint itself and i'm going to do black and white so i have a little bit of joe sonia chroma carbon black i'm just going to put a little drop there and then i'm also going to put a little bit of warm white We'll put a little here and I'm going to use my medium that I have made up and those of you who have been following me for a while know that I make up my own medium of a combination of things. So I have this nice little bottle that I can get at Michael's. You can get Hobby Lobby, uh, Blick, probably anywhere. And it is one to one to one of Joe Sonia Clear Glaze, Joe Sonia Retarder Medium, and Joe Sonia Flow Medium. All right, so that combination is together. Oh, let me not throw things from my table here. Oh, I'm, I'm like a mess. Things are flying everywhere. Oh, good grief. All right, I'm going to add some to both my colors here. Now, I have paper towel ready for my palette knife because I'm going to mix this together here. And I want to make the consistency very similar to what you would see from um, if you take your ice cream and you stir it up and you make it like into like a soup. There you go. So melted ice cream. And so again, what I'm going to work on today is detail work. So let's see. Ew. This would be like, here's a butterfly that I've done. These are the detail lines. We're going to work on that kind of stuff today. All right, so let's, oops, make sure you wipe your palette knife before you go to your lighter color. I've made a little bit of gray here, and that's okay. We're not going to worry too much about that right now because we're doing some demonstrations today. All right, so I'm going to work with two brushes today. The first brush that I am going to work with is... Dun, 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 dun. I need a drum roll. I need my son on his drums here. Of course, I thought I had the brush I wanted. Well, I'll go to this one. All right. It's a Joe Sonia Shore Touch 1365 script liner, and it's a zero. So a little longer. All right. I have a little water ready with my, um, just on the side. I have my, my, uh, been ready here. I can't think of words today. You ever have those days where words just go poof, gone? All right, I'm going to go into my white and I just added a little wet water to my brush just to loosen it up a little bit. And I'm going to twirl my brush through and I literally twist it with my fingers like this. And by doing this, I make sure and I get my point. Now I went for the white first only because I'm going to go to my piece of paper here. It's actually a Honey Nut Cheerios. You can take your cereal boxes and base coat them different colors so that you can use as practice boards. It's a wonderful thing to do. And this is base coated in um, Galaxy Blue. Also a Joe Sonia Chroma, Galaxy Blue. All right. So I have my brush ready and for those who have been with me, you've heard me say this before. It's very much like an airplane taking off and landing. Um, or, you know, landing and taking off. So here we go. Let's, let's come down. The airplane's coming down for a landing. And I'm going to push that brush down. And I'm just going to twirl it and come around. The nice thing with these brushes, ah, so you see, I don't know if you can see that. So it's beating up on me a little bit. So I base coated this quite a while ago. And what happens with that is the different oils, different residues end up on this. So you can take uh, vinegar. Da, da, da. 
I have vinegar right here, just vinegar. It breaks down whatever residues that have been on it, whether from your fingers or, you know, whatever out uh, around that just breaks it up. Now, when I say the oils, it's not oil paint. We're dealing with acrylic paint here. So I'm just going to wipe this down here so that any of the handling I've done with my hands, all those little oils are taken off on that. And that should make it so that your brush will be able to flow on it and you won't get that beading effect. All right, let's try that again. Again, I am working with acrylics. Rose mauling by nature is an oil wet on wet technique. But over the oh, last couple decades here, there have been some very wonderful acrylic paints that have come around that have made rose mulling an, um, an art form that you could actually work with acrylics. So with the mediums and the different things that you add to it, you can make the flow just like you will with acrylics with oils. Oh my goodness, I am getting everything confused today. <laughs> you know, it's been a very hectic couple of weeks. My oldest daughter went back to college, so we were get it busy getting her ready to go, and she's in an apartment for the first time, so getting that ready. And our younger two are getting ready for virtual school, so we're working on all of that, and we've had some house projects going on. So I, I'm kind of a little scattered and a lot of commission work that I'm finishing. So please excuse my scatteredness. All right. So here's a little form, just a C stroke with an S stroke that I just put together playing with the brush. So just like we would do with your scrolls, your S scrolls and your C scrolls, we can do the same with our liner brush. So I'm going to push my brush down I am going to pull it to the right. I'm going to take the pressure off the brush and let it fade off to a line. Now I was losing a little color in there, so that's okay. I'm going to come back and add some color to it. Let's push it down again. I can push those bristles down as far as I want and make it as thick as I want. But when I take the pressure off the brush, those lines become nice and thin and I can finish it off. And I'm going to the tip of the bristles and I stop and I pull it straight up. It's a lot of fun to play with your brush and to get the flow with it. So we have a C scroll there and usually we'll have an S scroll come off the top. So I'm going to take my brush, I'm going to push it to the left this time, and I'm going to pull it around the back of that C stroke, and pull it around and bring my bristles up and let it finish. The nice thing with line work is this is a fun thing to do if you're sitting watching TV or just looking for a little doodle time. To take your brush and just play with it. Lay it down. Look at that nice teardrop. I can do another teardrop like this, right? Let it come back. But then I can pull a nice little line off of it. Oh, isn't that pretty? I can push it the opposite direction and pull it back, round it out, and just pull it out. But this is a wonderful way to start playing with the embellishments that you can add to your piece, whether you're doing rose modeling or some other art form. This is just kind of a fun way to give it boom. I'm making up words. So it's still all based on, let's say like an S, like I've shown with the larger brushes for the S stroke. You can do a little Z, bring it around, push. So here's your airplane is coming in for a landing. 
it's coming down but you know we need to abort we're going to take back off again let it go let it follow through i'm going to come down for my c stroke i'm going to come down for a landing i'm going to push my bristles down 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 I'm going to slow my brush around because I wanted to give my bristles time to catch up to me and then right up. If you go too fast, a lot of times you'll get like a flippy thing. We don't want a flippy thing. So I did have some black paint ready as well and I have this white paper that's here. So when you have your brush, you can literally just take some time and just play. Learn how to use all of your bristles to the point and push it down and around. The more you play around with your brush, the more you play around with the paint, the better feel you have, the more confidence you have when you're working with it. So this is this brush is one that I really like to use. I also like to use a smaller liner, which many of you who have been with me for a while know that I like the 10-0 liners. And um, Jackie Shaw is usually my favorite liner. I'm reaching here. I'm looking for my King's Art, and I, <laughs> I think the brush fairies have taken it away from me. Is that a, no, that's a Jackie Shaw. Well, you know... I guess we're just going to work with going. Gonna. There's my New York coming out. Going to work with. Ah, uh, no, that's a Jackie Shaw. Wow, I can't find my King's Art. All right, we're going to work with my Joe Sonia Short Touch today when I work on these other pieces. So here's a little sample. Now, right now, I am working on these butterflies that I like to paint, and I have a few people out there waiting for them. So I'm going to contact them, let them know that they are going on my Etsy site. Um, anyway, these are just fun little butterflies. Here's the finished product here. And we want to add some detail work to this. So let's look at this guy here. I'm going to use this as kind of my template. All right. So again, I am using, hold on, I got a little, I messed up. Got a little white paint on my butterfly here. Didn't need to do that, so we'll just clean that up. Okay. So let's go ahead and add some embellishments to my butterfly here. So I'm going to come down, I'm going to push, come up. Now, your C strokes and your S strokes that form your rose balling, that is the core and the foundation of really all rose balling styles. This is, oh, it's a Hollingdahl. It's from the Hollingdahl region of Norway. It's more symmetrical. So if you look at the matching side here, it's more um, opaque than it would be a telemark style. I, and I've mentioned this before, so I promise for those who have been watching me for a while, I am going to put a video together of some other styles. I'll kind of work my way through them. And uh, again, maybe when everybody gets back to school, I'll have a little time to really focus in here. I feel very, has anybody out there felt very scattered of late? Yeah, that's kind of how I felt. All right, let's bring this around. And it's just nice. You're going to add just little detail lines. And you want to have variation. You want to have things that are thick and thin. So I am happy to announce that September 12th, 2020, is National Rose Mulling Day. The Rose Mulling Coast to Coast group, which I'm very fortunate to be a part of, is really started this. And we're going to have classes, online classes, available uh, for those who want to give Rose Mulling a try. 
and you can go to the Rosemont and Coast to Coast website or our Facebook page I should say for information or you can go to my Facebook page Art of Lisa um, I'm actually offering uh, three classes that day two classes uh, there'll be a repeat it's really learning brush strokes it's a two-hour class of introduction to rose mulling brush strokes and then I will also have uh, midday a Holling doll Christmas ornament Christmas tree Christmas ornament class uh, which is two and a half hours and I will try to put all the information in my uh, notes down below you can find it on my Facebook page Art of Lisa L-I-S-E so I will be taking 15 students a class there's two other wonderful ladies Kim Garrett and Betty Dow that will be offering classes that day um, and I think I, I think this is going to be a great way to introduce teaching rose modeling via online classes zoom and such and getting more people really into it okay let's add some little dots here okay hopefully you guys are close enough my hands are not in the way so again you want to take some time and play with your brush and learn what it can do for you and don't be afraid of it remember and I've said this many times it's just paint it's not a life and death situation here and in today's times isn't that wonderful to not have a stressful situation here and I know some of you right now were looking at me and thinking well that's easy for you to say you know, and I know I can't tell you how many times I've told my students, do not wear your shoulders as earrings because, you know, you get your shoulders all tied up there. But you just want to enjoy it. You know, in today's times, when God gives you gifts and gives you interest in different things, it's up to us to pursue them. It's up to us to find joy in the little things in life. That's certainly something that I have... I've learned over the years and especially over these uh, last few months just find joy God is good all the time all the time God is good so if we can just enjoy a little paint time with it's just paint then that's what we're going to do so I'm just gonna add some lines here I can hear Chloe upstairs her little feet are pitter-pattering. She was barking quite a bit, so I, I kind of sent her upstairs so she wouldn't uh, interrupt today. All right, let's add some nice little dots. Every, every little detail you add... Oh, I'm losing my voice. I sound like my 13-year-old with his voice changing. Every little detail you add just adds to the look of your piece and the pleasure that you get from it. Just add a little dot because you need a sepal. And notice, you know, this brush, as you saw, I could get these really thick lines from, but if you look at what I'm doing right now, these are very fine little lines that I'm getting from the same brush. So it's really worth taking the time to play with that and see what you can get out of it and know that you know, you don't always need to have 18 different brushes for doing line work. One good brush and practice is all you need. Let's see. We're getting a good look at that. All right. So I have a bunch of things I'm going to set up on my Etsy shop. I have a soccer tournament to go to. Well, I, I don't. My son does. Me on the soccer field would be a hot mess. Although, well, yes and no. If that's if you put me on a, on a soccer field with a bunch of soccer moms. Maybe I'd be okay. With a bunch of 13 year and 14-year-olds, no. But uh, we have a soccer tournament this weekend. 
thank goodness. And uh, we'll see how that goes. So hopefully by the end of this weekend, I will have more pieces on my Etsy shop. Maybe these included. I have a number of these going out. Okay. And pull it around. All right. So there we go. There's my butterfly. There's my detail work. I hope you enjoyed spending some time with me today, and I have more videos coming, and I'll get a little faster with my videos. I want to thank you all for joining me. Let me come back up here. Thank you all for spending some time with me. I hope you have a blessed day, and uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. Remember, it's just paint.